And joining me now is former director of CSIS and national security advisor to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, Richard Fadden. Thank you so much for being here, Mr. Fadden. I appreciate this. Good to be here. I wanted to ask you, at the t what we heard today is that until today, a lot of the focus was put on whether or not it met the threshold to hit the CSIS Act or not. In testimony today, though, Mr. Vigneault said both things can be true. It cannot meet the threshold, but also be a threat. What do you think of that? Well, I think there's some truth in what he says. The definition of uh, threats to national security in the CSIS Act is pretty narrow. It's relatively clear. And he formed the judgment that it did not. While I didn't have the intelligence that he had, it seems to me that, you know, I think there's a good case to be made that it did meet the threshold. But beyond that, what he's doing is giving advice to the Prime Minister and to Cabinet, and they have to take, I think they have to take, as part of their duty, a broader view of what constitutes a threat to national security. So I think he's right in saying that there are two, uh, there are two thresholds, there are two ways of looking at this, and to some degree he's had to be schizophrenic in saying this. He's both the CSIS director and an experienced official who's responding to a question from the Prime Minister. Do too many of us and those who are looking at this and actually trying to figure out in the Emergencies Act inquiry whether or not there was a right or wrong answer, do too many of us look at national security in a black and white scenario? I think that's the case. I mean, I think most of the issues, except possibly when you're dealing with terrorism and a bomb's going to go off, mm -hmm. most of the issues in national security are gray. You know, when does foreign intelligence sort of morph, in, uh, foreign interference morph into diplomacy? Uh, when does espionage become just somebody trying to find out something a bit and, and surreptitiously? Uh, when does sedition become something of major concern to the government as opposed to people who are having a couple of beers sort of just cursing the government? Most of it is gray, and that's why I think you have experts in CSIS and elsewhere, with the help of the Department of Justice, formulating judgments. There's no right. checkbox. And especially more recently, because Michelle Tessier had said in her testimony, it's very difficult to know when a threat is going to go from online to offline and they're going to act. And now she also noted how it's not like there are typical structures of terrorist networks where there was, a, like Al-Qaeda, for instance, where there was a specific pecking order. How much does that affect sort of trying to assess these threat levels? I think it does a lot. I think it's important to remember the CSIS Act was written, I think it was 85, uh, in response to some uh, wrongdoing by the old security service, the definitions were pretty narrow. Since 85, if you think about what's changed, we've gone from the Cold War to terrorism to violent extremism, uh, all having different characteristics. And it's true that the current uh, preoccupation with terrorism, uh, with uh, extremism, is very different than terrorism. You can have four or five people in one part of the country communicating over the internet, by and large, I think it's been established before the Public Order Commission that the, the leadership, there was no leadership in the convoy mm -hmm. in Ottawa, and that's just a small example. But it does mean that you have to follow as many people as you can, aggregate up what they're saying and thinking, and again, form a judgment. So what needs to be changed? Is it more staffing up of CSIS, or is it changing the definition, or both? Arguably, I think both. I mean, truly and honestly, a statute that was constructed in 1985 to deal with the Cold War and terrorism, it, you know, it needs to be broadened. And I think if there's one good thing that will come out of this public uh, inquiry, it's everything that's gone wrong. We should look at what's gone wrong, the sharing of intelligence, the failure to develop intelligence earlier, difficulties between law enforcement and national security. All of these things need to be looked at, I think, collectively. And if it's not just the CSIS Act and the definition that needs to be changed, the government should look at other statutes. They also need clearly to establish better lines of communications between municipalities and provinces mm -hmm. and the various police forces. What needs to change in the definition, though, in your mind? I think it has to incorporate elements, for example, of economic harm. I think it has to be made clear that for national security to be endangered, you don't necessarily need physical harm, although that's a useful mm -hmm. element if that's being demonstrated. I think it has to clearly indicate how broad it should be. I mean, if you just have two or three people, there's no threat to national security in most cases. If you have several hundred. So I think broaden, not so much broadening the definition as providing more specificity as mm -hmm. to what it includes. But generally speaking, I think it needs to be broadened. I wanted to ask you, today we had also heard from CSIS that more than half of their resources are looking at ideologically motivated violent extremist threats. What does that say about the current threat environment that we're living in? Well, it says that we're sharing a, this, the same threat that most Western countries are sharing. I think CSIS is right to sort of have redirected a lot of their resources.
But I'm also concerned, just as a Canadian, you know, terrorism is still a major threat. Mm -hmm. Russia and China have upped their espionage, their foreign influence significantly. So I'd like to think that in doing this, there are enough resources left behind to do all these other things. So I, I'm, I've been gone too long to be able to say categorically the service needs more resources, but I'm beginning to think that it does. And because it's so difficult to keep an eye on all of it, I'm assuming. That's correct. That's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. Because you need slightly different skills for all of these. You know, when you're looking at terrorists, you're usually looking at, at a group of people that have clear links internationally. As you said a moment ago, they usually have very clear hierarchies. That requires a certain you know, approach. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at foreign influence by, say, China or Russia, that's an entirely different ballgame again. It doesn't, doesn't involve violence at all, but it does involve the, the, the need to be able to distinguish between a mass of information, who's bringing it forward, why they're bringing it forward, and to what end. Former Director of CSIS, Richard Fadden, thank you so much for being with us. Appreciate it. My pleasure.